While studying abroad in Cape Town, South Africa, the effects of drugs and alcohol were very apparent throughout the city and townships. With the progression of HIV, AIDS, poverty, and violence within the city and townships, the use and drugs of alcohol had many positive and negative influences on the people's lives. The main issues and topics we will address are the antiretroviral drug use and abuse, alcohol prevalence, and the most commonly used recreational drugs within Cape Town. South Africa is the HIV AIDS capital of the world. In order to solve this problem, many steps have been made to develop a treatment that will slow the progress of HIV in the body. These drugs are known as antiretroviral drugs, also known as ARVs. South Africa currently has the largest ARV program in the world. ARVs are helping to find an answer to HIV and ultimately saving lives. An ARV treatment prevents HIV from copying itself within the cell, but does not kill the HIV. HIV treatment with ARVs can significantly reduce a person's chances of transmitting HIV, but doesn't eliminate the risk. Currently, there are about 20 ARV drugs on the market. The combination of ARVs and recreational drugs can be especially dangerous because ARVs can increase the effects of those drugs. If continued on the drug consistently and correctly, an HIV-positive individual can live with very low viral levels, making the virus undetectable, therefore allowing them to live a happy, healthy, and normal life. Although these ARVs have been life-changing for South Africa and individuals who are HIV positive, the abuse and misuse of the drug has become a very big problem. ARVs are being stolen, sold, smoked, and abused. Wunga, which is a combination of ARVs, rat poison, and anything that can be smoked to create a high. Ephavarins, which is a very commonly used form of ARVs, is being sold as Wunga on the streets for 5 rands with the catchphrase of E5 rands. Johan from Hokumela spoke of another issue with these drugs. With the creation of ARVs, HIV is seen as less of a threat because there is a treatment for it. Therefore, safe sex and primary prevention techniques are now being disregarded. The most apparent first-hand experience that our group had with these ARVs was at the Crossroads Clinic. Dr. Rue spoke of how these drugs have become more of a spackle, meaning that these drugs are here to fill the cracks and prevent from further progress, not to fix the problem. Alcohol and drugs in South Africa seem to be very accessible and laws are not highly enforced. Many of these drugs are seen as an escape from reality for most impoverished people. John from Youth Solutions shared with us the mentality of many people living on the streets. There is no fear of death and no motivation for tomorrow. When told that by abusing drugs they could die tomorrow, their responses are typically, so what? As if they have nothing more to live for. Therefore, these recreational drugs are positive for these people by acting as a temporary happiness, even though this mindset is not condoned in normal society. On the negative side, many of these drugs are highly addictive. Many homeless people will even use the little money that they have to purchase drugs rather than food. Addiction leads to an increased violence and crime on the streets, as well as high levels of sexual activity. As Stella pre presented to us at University of Cape Town, drug use increases sexual behavior by 93%. In addition, 74% of the students saw an increase in the transmission of HIV with the consumption of alcohol. Alcohol is also heavily used and abused in the townships. Many mental and physical disabilities were linked to characteristics of fetal alcohol syndrome. Tick, also referred to as speed, meth, or globes, is a stimulant that affects the central nervous system. In Cape Town, South Africa, the use of crystal meth has exploded rapidly. Known locally as Tick, the drug was virtually unknown as of, the late, as of late 2003. Now Tick is the city's main drug of abuse. Tick is usually smoked using a straw and a light bulb. Tick is cheap, widely available, easy to make, and the recipe is on the internet, so there are lots of small operations making tick. Adolescents are the main users of this drug. The problem with that is adolescence is a time of great change, insecurity, and often involves a time period where the person lacks confidence. Tick compensates for this and gives users a sense of confidence and a feeling of euphoria. Research has shown that tick users take significantly higher sexual risks, which heightens the spread of HIV. DACA, or cannabis, is well known in South Africa. The active ingredient of the plant, THC, is responsible for most of the outstanding characteristics of the psychoactive effects of the plant. DACA is primarily smoked and is usually mixed in with tobacco because DACA doesn't burn easily on its own. The South African climate is very favorable for the growth of DACA. According to users, the effects of DACA will vary from person to person. 
Dhaka is a light depressant, and when it is smoked, the effect thereof will be felt within minutes and reaches its peak after about three minutes. Dhaka will hold the effect on the body for a period of two to three hours. The stronger the dose of Dhaka that is taken, the longer and more intense the so-called trip will be. Dhaka has the effect to speed up the pulse rate of an individual and make the individual's blood pressure drop drastically. Other effects of Dhaka include serious thirst, increased appetite, aggression, lightheadedness, and forgetfulness. Because South Africa is a major shipping hub, cocaine is a drug that is coming in and being distributed on a regular basis. The money is a major attraction to the drug as well as the lifestyle. Cocaine is a stimulant that provides the user of the substance with a feeling of exhilaration, improved mental alertness, and stimuli intensification. Due to the extensive poverty and homelessness in South Africa, it is easy to see why cocaine is such an attractive and growing drug. The use of cocaine in South Africa has risen by 20% in the past couple of years and is continuing to steadily rise. At the University of Cape Town, Stella told us that the estimated number of South Africans that are using cocaine is about 290,000 people. This drug has many serious side effects and can be very dangerous, resulting in an overdose death. Ecstasy. Although not as popular as other countries, South Africa manufactures about one ton of ecstasy each year. Ecstasy is becoming a rising problem with teenagers and young adults. Ecstasy is becoming easier and easier to get throughout South Africa. Many people that have admitted to taking ecstasy have also admitted to using crystal meth with it. This has many addiction experts concerned because of the serious health consequences when combining these dangerous drugs. One of the main consequences that has many worried is that the combination can lead to death. It is hard to pinpoint one specific way to solve problems such as alcohol and drug abuse in South Africa. Many of the impoverished people have a degraded value of life and no desire to get off the streets. We believe that the key answers to these problems start with education and the empowerment of people. For example, rather than enabling the homeless to stay on the streets by only providing them with food, we would like to enforce that each soup kitchen provide a lecture or discussion about various health, behavioral, or occupational topics to motivate them to live a better life. As simply put by John, you first have to have faith in people so that they in turn have faith in themselves.